So I am just talking about how I got the links data to fit into the crosscut metadata model for the CFDE. Um, so again, a brief overview of what I'll be talking about today um, is just the what is the CFDE um, and what is the crosscut metadata model, um, and then also the links data sets that I particularly worked with. Um, and then finally, how the data packages were actually built for incorporation into the crosscut metadata model. Um, so to give a brief introduction of a CFDE and C2M2, the CFDE is the Common Fund Data Ecosystem. Um, and it is the consortium behind developing an online portal that is going to eventually consolidate all of the Common Fund data sets, including the links and IDG data. Um, and the end goal is to be able to access and use all of this data in a cloud environment, um, which is also going to conform to the FAIR findability, accessibility, interoperability, and reusability um, data principles. Uh, there's also some side goals of training the scientific community on how to use the Common Fund data sets um, with the hopes that this will encourage novel research hypotheses and investigations. Um, so obviously one major problem with uh, this lofty goal is that all the data sets currently are divided across various locations, various formats. Um, they contain very different types of data and metadata. Um, and so in order to be able to incorporate them all into a single standardized online portal, um, you need kind of an organizing principle for the data, which is what the crosscut metadata model is. Um, and this is the CFDE's metadata standard for biomedical resources that are eventually going to go into um, the portal. Um, and the purpose of having this unified model is just to improve the integration and accessibility of data and also allow for the simplification of meta-analyses that require multiple data sets across several different common funds. Um, and there are three levels of complexity, um, level zeros, one, uh, levels zero, one, and two, um, which I will discuss in slightly more detail um, later on in the presentation. Uh, so I worked with the Lynx data sets, um, particularly the Lynx CMAP L1000 data sets from phase one and phase two, and also the Lynx PCCSE data and the L1000 GTEx data, um, and a little bit with the Lynx data portal data. Um, so for an overview, um, most of the data that I worked with was just the level three um, data, L1000 data, which is just normalized gene expression profiles. Um, all the data originally came to me as just large um, data sets that I divided into biological replicates, um, which is a little different for each data set. Um, and I'll explain more when I get to the individual data sets. Um, and then these are all uploaded into S3 buckets, um, which I'm not sure why the metadata isn't displaying correctly for these buckets in the screenshot, but those are basically the five different uh, data buckets. Um, so first up is a Lynx data portal, which um, I believe Daniel actually did most of the uh, C2M2 ingestion process for um, in terms of actually compiling the metadata for each data set um, and combining that into like a little nice little data package, which then I just appended onto what I did. Um, but basically the Lynx data portal just has around 400 data sets split across six different projects, which will be um, relevant to something I'll talk about later. Um, they have multiple assay types and uh, formats, which I can briefly show. Um, this is just a brief, uh, or not a brief, a actually kind of detailed spreadsheet I made of the different assay types from the Lynx data portal and also their uh, format um, mappings in terms of the EDAM ontology and also their data type mappings. Um, and so there's a lot of variation. Um, and so shout out to Daniel for getting all of this into um, the metadata <laughs> file. Um, and basically the, each of these data sets is assigned. Um, they're already split into individual data sets with their own ID, which is like an LDS number. 
Um, and then groups of experiments are also combined into uh, data groups, which all have their own LDG or links data group ID. Um, and those groups are collections of distinct assay specific experiments. Um, which was also relevant for building the data package, as I will discuss later. Um, and then, so the bulk of the data that I worked with was the CMAP data, or the L1000 phase one and phase two data. Um, and for this data, I divided all of the data into biological replicate files. Um, and how I determined the biological replicates were largely by looking at the well number um, but each, basically each well number on each plate um, is like a biological replicate in terms of it is the same perturbation type, the same cell line, um, the same perturbation time, um, the same perturbagen, and also the same perturbation dose. Um, and usually there's around two to four replicates per file. Um, and so you can see here on the right, there's an example. Um, there's a brief screenshot of an example file where you see at the top, um, there's the two different replicates that I took from the original data file. And now they're in their own file, which is named the file name um, beneath the picture. And I've bolded the relevant information. So AML001 would be the perturbation type, followed by the cell line, the perturbation time, the well number, um, the perturbation ID or name, I guess, um, and then the dosage. There's also um, data from the Lynx Proteomic Characterization Center for Signaling and Epigenetics, or the PCCSE. Um, the data was very similar to the CMAP data um, in terms of how each file was named, except for they did not use the same cell well number for biological replicates. Um, instead, if you can tell from the screenshot on the right, the three biological replicates were actually just spaced two, um, two wells apart each, or yes, two wells apart each. So again, I divided the biological replicates um, by perturbation type, cell line, perturbation time, um, perturbagen and perturbation dose. Um, the only difference is that instead of the well number, the plate ID now is part of the um, the file name. Uh, and again, there were around two to four replicates per file. And then finally, um, I also had the data from the L1000 profiles of the GTEx samples. Um, and these biological replicates were determined by the donor and tissue ID. Um, so you can see in the two screenshots, I have the different file names. I bolded the uh, donor ID, which is the four letter code, and then the tissue ID, which is the four, new, four digit numerical code. Um, and the GTEx data was also interesting in that there was a wide range of number of replicates per donor tissue. Um, I looked briefly at the GTEx sample collection worksheet, um, and it seems that the differences were mainly due to um, obviously sex limitations um, because they're female specific and male specific tissues. Um, cause of death also played a role um, as well as time of death because samples could only be collected within a short time frame. Um, and also ventilator deaths, um, if they were on ventilator for more than 24 hours, the certain tissues like the brain were automatically excluded from collection. Um, but I think generally most of these files had around one to, I would say about 10 um, replicates. Um, okay, so that was a brief overview of all of the data sets that I worked with. Um, and now I'll kind of talk about the actual data packages that um, I built for incorporation into the CFDE portal based on the C2M2 model. Um, and just as a preface, because I did forget to add this in, each data package um, is essentially a single TSV file or a group of TSV files um, bundled with a single JSON schema that is just called data package.json. Um, I'll start with a level zero um, data package because it's pretty simple and straightforward. Um, it's just a single table named file.tsv um, that contains all of these metadata categories. 
Um, and so for the level zero links data package, um, the ID namespace end up just being the links project URL. Um, and this is basically just identifying um, the larger project or grant, I guess, that all the data is coming from. Um, the local ID is usually the local path to the file. Um, and this ended up being the same as just the file name. Uh, and then the persistent ID um, is the actual link to the, uh, the path to the file in the S3 bucket. Um, so here I just have three examples for those. Um, and then the size and bytes is pretty self-explanatory. It's just the size of the, each of the files. Um, and then I also uh, created SHA-256 and MD5 checksums for each file. And this basically means just reading each file um, chunk by chunk um, and recording the actual checksums. And then this is all done before zipping the files just to make sure in the future if the file is corrupted um, or modified in some way, there is some way to keep track of that. Um, and then file name, again, is pretty self-explanatory. And so basically the table, um, which I think I forgot to include a screenshot of, is just um, for every single file that I created previously from the data sets, all this information is recorded. Um, and then it was packaged together in directory with the level zero data package. Um, and that was ready for ingestion into the model. Um, and then, so the level one data package um, is quite a bit more complicated. Um, as you'll see, there's a lot of different parts to it, um, and I'll try to go through all of them um, briefly without going into too much detail. Um, basically, there are core entity tables, which are the file, bio sample, and subject files. Um, and these are probably the most important because they're what the actual, or they contain the most basic um, metadata for each of the files. There are also container files um, or container metadata tables, um, and they describe projects and collections, which, um, as I mentioned earlier, were most relevant to the links data portal data, um, which was indeed separated into different projects and also different collections. Um, there is a single table um, with information on the primary contact um, of the uh, data coordination center for the given uh, project. And then there is a whole bunch of association tables that need to be built. Um, and these describe both containment relationships, such as if projects are subprojects or other projects. Um, I'll show an example later, but for instance, all of the links projects, so the individual data sets um, that I worked with, the PCCSE, the L1000G text, um, the links data portal, all those projects are subprojects of the overarching links project. Um, there's also collection and collection, file and collection, subject and collection, and bio sample and collection. Um, and then there's also inter-entity uh, relationship tables which basically um, they also have pretty self-explanatory names such as um, the data in the file comes from which subject, from which bio sample, which bio sample comes from which subject, um, which collections are in which project, and then subject role taxonomy um, is just an overview of the um, NCBI taxonomy of the subject, um, which I will talk about a little more later. And then finally, there's controlled vocabulary tables, and these um, are automatically built after, I believe, the core entity tables are built. Um, and the CFDE does provide a script to build these, um, and basically they'll go through the file, file sample, and subject files and extract the relevant um, metadata keys um, and basically create mappings of, um, for example, like the uh, OBI assay type or the Uberon anatomy um, of a given entry in one of those tables. Um, okay, so this is an example of the level one file.tsv. Um, it was a bit long, so I just split into two screenshots, um, but I tried to include an example from each of the different data projects. Um, so you can kind of see um, how this is formatted. 
um, in terms of how each project has like a different naming scheme for local ID and for file name and for the persistent ID. Um, and then you'll also see that in addition to the level, Z, level zero categories, um, there's now like project ID namespace and project local ID. So that identifies the project or sub project that each uh, file is coming from. Um, there's also now uncompressed size invites. Um, in addition to just size invites, um, a lot of these files are pretty large. So they had to be compressed before upload. Um, and then finally, there's the new ca categories of file format, data type, assay type, and MIME type. Um, and file format, data type, and assay type in particular are the, some of the foreign keys that are going to be eventually be used for building those controlled vocabulary tables. Okay, the next most important file that needed to be built is BioSample. Um, and this describes the actual samples that each file um, was made of. And it is a little complicated, as I'll kind of talk about later, to um, distinguish what is a biosample versus what is a subject. But in essence, um, a biosample will come from a subject um, and it may go through various stages of processing um, or, and that, or some kind of modification, but eventually it will be used to produce um, the data that is contained in a file. Um, and at the level one data model level, um, they mainly just care about the original biosample from the subject. Um, and I think eventually there will be some sort of um, accommodation for any like modifications or processing of samples. Um, but here you kind of see for like the links, um, the links data portal uh, data sets, the biosample ID is just the cell line. It's the LCL ID from the data group, um, the LDG ID. Um, for the links CMAP and the PCCSE data sets, it's a little more complicated because then um, I had to take into account the actual, um, the, not only the cell line, but also the specific um, well or plate that the sample was placed in. Um, and then for the GTEx data, um, it was pretty self-explanatory because it was just the specific tissue from the specific donor. Um, and then so here's an example of um, it's like what the file describes bio sample table look like. You see you have the file ID, the file local ID, um, and then the bio sample local ID. Um, and this basically just matches each file to the sample that it comes from. Uh, the last um, core entity table is the subject table, um, which again, here you can see it. There's most or uh, four out of the five that I've shown here. Um, they belong to just the overarching links project, and that's because um, links has assigned each cell line they used um, an LCL or link cell line ID. Um, and so for like the PCCSE data um, and the CMAP data, all of those, um, all the all of those samples came from a single links cell line. Um, the only real subjects that I had to add um, were basically the GTEx um, subjects. And for the GTEx data, each subject would be an individual um, that the tissue sample came from. Um, and so you can see on the far right, there's the granularity column. Um, and for the first four, the granularity is four, which is cell line. Um, and for the last one, it's zero, which is individual. Um, and so here again is another example of like mapping an individual file to um, the subject that the sample used to create the file came from. Um, and then again, like mapping the file sample to the subject. So in this case, um, the specific cell line used in a specific data group to the actual cell line. Okay, in terms of the containers, um, this is the project table. Um, so you can see the very first entry is just the overarching links project. Um, and then you'll see there's a wide variety of different tables. I believe the first five are all, no, the first six 
are all from the links data portal. So there's links phase two data, phase one data, external links data, um, MCF 10A project, joint project, and the trans center data. Um, and then the next four are all the data sets that I uh, parsed through and divided. Um, the links L1000 data refers to the CMAP phase two data, um, which I believe actually Daniel actually also created the file um, tables for that. Um, and then there's the phase one CMAP data, the PCCSE data, and then the GTEx data. Um, and then, so here is just an example of like project in project. So you can see all of the other projects besides the Lynx project are child projects of the parent project. Um, I also included the collection. Um, this was mostly relevant for the Lynx data portal data, as I mentioned earlier, just because all of those data sets are already nicely packaged into data groups um, or collections. Um, and so here you can just see the table that I believe Daniel built, um, which I had nothing really to do with. Uh, and then this is just an example of the assay type um, controlled vocabulary table, which I believe I used the CFD script to build. Um, and basically this goes, if you'll remember in the file um, table, there was an assay type category that had OBI IDs for the different assays. Um, and so this table basically maps the OBI IDs to what is the name and what is the description of the actual assay. Um, and for the other controlled vocabulary tables, I didn't show because they're all basically um, the same idea is just mapping the IDs that are found in some of the core entity tables to the actual information, like the readable, useful information on um, things such as what anatomy, what part of the human anatomy did this sample come from, um, what is the data type of this file, and what is the format type of this file, um, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and I'll briefly talk about the level two data package. Um, so right now there is no, um, I believe there is no standard yet um, or schema for the level two data package. I believe that's still being worked on, um, but eventually this should contain a lot of the information that's still missing from the level one data package. Um, so I think uh, like accommodations for, um, I believe secured uh, or private, uh, I'm blanking on the word right now, um, basically data that's not public, classified data, classified data. Um, also some clinical information for some of the um, DCCs that require that, um, and just also accommodating all the different like state stages that a sample might go through before it actually is used to build a file. Um, and, I guess that'll be something I might present on later um, when the actual specifications for the model come out. Um, and then, so just as some final thoughts, um, some of the things that I ran into while I was going through this process, um, because I think for anyone who's been going to the CFDE um, cross-pollination meetings, a lot of this probably was pretty familiar, um, but for me, I thought it all seemed pretty straightforward until I actually started trying to build the tables. Um, and then I realized that it is a significant amount of work to be dealing with so much data. Um, the first thing I want to talk about was that all the um, data tables had to be validated against the data package that JSON schema. Um, I did not just make these files and then just send them to the CFDE and hope that they would be, you know, they would work um, and be correct. They do have, because there are some requirements in terms of which um, keys or columns are required in each table and also how the different tables match up. Um, and so all the, that is pretty important to consider when building these tables. Um, the second logistical thing that I realized um, was that once I built the core entity tables, the file, bio sample, and subject tables, the association tables were actually relatively simple to build, at least for the data sets that I worked with. Um, I can't say a lot about how the links data portal data set um, metadata was kind of compiled, but um, for me, because the file name and the local ideal, a local ID of each file actually contained 
information already on the sample and subject. Um, it was just a matter of kind of doing some string parsing and string matching in order to get the IDs and like the new information out of that. Um, I also wanted to note that for me, um, building each project separately was much easier um, than trying to build everything at once, just because then um, like the project local ID and the project namespace could just be the same for all of those files. Um, and also most of them, usually the files in a single project are um, the same type, um, data type, they're the same format. Um, and it's just a little bit easier to build them for each project and then just combine into a single table. Um, and then kind of going off of that, um, it was also really important to consider the differences between projects and collections. Um, so like I said, the links data portal data was already packaged neatly into collections. Um, whereas the data that I was working with, because I had to kind of divide them into biological replicates and they all came as just one giant file originally, um, collections were a little less relevant, um, but then they were still their own individual projects um, because they were data collected at separate times for separate purposes and separate papers. Um, it's also important, like I said earlier, to understand um, the subject versus biosample difference. Um, the C2M2 model helps a bit with this because they do have um, grant like fixed granularity for the subjects. Um, so for instance, they have cell line individual. Um, I think host and symbiotic host and symbiote um, relationships. Um, and so that could help clarify a little bit. Um, and then the last logistical thing that I um, had to kind of deal with was making the um, or adding to some of the mappings for the tissues and cell lines because um, it took a little bit of research to find out what each GTEx tissue ID um, actually meant in terms of the tissue. Um, and then also like some of the cell lines, um, like I said, in the CMAP data and the PCCSE data, although they were the same cell lines as used for the Lynx data portal, um, data sets, the cell line was recorded as the actual cell line instead of the link cell line ID. Um, and so I just had to create separate mappings, mapping cell lines to their LCL IDs, and then append that to the table. Um, but I think that is basically it. Um, I don't know if anyone has any questions. This is kind of a quick overview just because a lot of it is repetitive. Um, but I know other people are working on trying to make um, metadata tables for ingestion into the C2M2. So I hope this was a little bit helpful.